So welcome to session three of HRM 722. Uh, last week we spent some time talking about why information management is so important in the context of HR and how we do things strategically today. Uh, we went over the model of what an HR IMS could look like, uh, meaning that there are inputs into the system. And remember, a system is simply a way of doing something. So imagine your HR department, you're constantly feeding it with data and you have to be aware of where the data comes from and systematically go out and get it. So you're continually feeding your HR information system. So efficient input of data, uh, efficient storage of data, and at some point we surround ourselves with good people, credible, intelligent people who can make sense of it all. And then of course, don't forget the tools and the technology, you know, anything from Excel to other parts of Office to a dedicated HR system like uh, SAP, PeopleSoft, SuperHR, Oracle, Workday, whatever it might be called, but an actual HR system that is used to manage data about your employees. So we managed to do that and realize that the outputs are information that we use for decision making. Now, um, in the context of why it is so important today, we talked about the fact that there's more employees in the service sector and more employees means that they are the product and that there's more information to manage about the people. Therefore, the amount of information has grown to a mountain. Uh, second is we now have more complex, much more complex employment law to deal with and there's one way to comply with law and that is to keep information. Uh, therefore, the amount of information has just grown exponentially. And the third one is that we have a much fiercer, more competitive global labor market. So we need to compete better, um, greater need to compete. And therefore, we realize there's only one way to compete, and that's by having proper information, proper intelligence. So the mountain of data has just grown. Now, this week, what I want to talk about is what is that system? If you were asked to bring a system in. Let's say you go to a company and they don't have one. Then what is it you do? Rather than freaking out. Uh, if you went to a company that has one but they're not using it to their fullest potential or it's old or it needs redesign, what would you do? What if you went to a company that already had a great HR system, they surrounded themselves with the proper elements and they're using it to its fullest extent strategically, then good. That's a place you want to retire. But when confronted with the task of bringing in a new HR system or revisioning it, looking at it from a different point of view, uh, a lot of people, they, they kind of freak out. They say, oh my God, I don't know what to do. So what I'm going to do is uh, show you the concept production model and bring it down to a level that, um, uh, that well, basically anybody could understand and I'll show you how I developed that model. So imagine you walk into an organization for your first job. Uh, you know, you spend a few months trying to get to know things, get to know people, uh, get to know the surrounding and so on. Uh, and your boss asks you, what can you do? Uh, and you take interest in this whole idea of HRIS or HR information management. Uh, and you say, maybe I could revisit, take a look at what we have, what we don't have, and maybe revamp it. Um, so like I said, if you go into an organization that has absolutely nothing, uh, maybe they're using very low level technology, maybe for word or email, then your challenge is there. Bring in a proper system efficiently and effectively get the data in, surround yourself with the right tools, including Excel and other systems that help you manage what they need to manage. You might go into a company that has a system, and, and I have to tell you, a majority of HR departments I've seen do have tools available to them, but they're not using them to their fullest capacity, to their fullest potential. Uh, they might take the time for granted. They don't do much strategic work because of it. You might then need to revisit uh, that system and show people that, hey, you can use it more strategically, introduce things like Tableau and pivots, have a totally different view of how you can manage your data to find the problems and the opportunities within that data. And you might go into an organization that's already done it, it's doing it well, then no problem, relax. You're just continually looking at the new technology that's coming out to see how you can harness it. For example, artificial intelligence or blockchain, things like that. Uh, and we'll talk about that later. But let's say you do go to an organization that could deserve another look at HRIS and your job 
you are tasked with that job. Your title will be HRIS coordinator. I have to tell you, you're going to end up learning uh, more about HR than pretty much anybody else because you have to investigate. Uh, and it's a great place to be. Keep an open mind, sense of awareness, a sense of curiosity. Now, if confronted with that role, you might freak out and say, oh my God, what have I got myself into? Well, don't worry. There's this model uh, that's been developed. Uh, it's called the concept production model. And in its simplicity, it's just a bunch of steps that you undertake to go from an idea, a concept of a proper HR system, including the tools and the technology, uh, to production when it's all done and people are finding it natural and intuitive and they're making good strategic use of it. Now, I'm not suggesting you have to follow all of those steps. And in fact, even if you go to an organization that has already done all this and you inherit something that's already good, it's always a good idea to understand how somebody got there, how it works in the background, how the models, the politics, the costing, the budgets, and everything work, because you become much more knowledgeable of how to manage these sorts of things anyways. It's like, you know, I could teach you how to drive a car, but along the way, it would really benefit you if you understood the car itself, what's in it, how it works, how it was made, how to troubleshoot, find opportunities within it, problems within it. So the concept production model, I should tell you, was developed out of experience. Um, you know, textbooks don't really mention it this way, but um, I had one of my first clients was a very large company, uh, cross country we implemented. But at the same time, I also did a small company, you know, only 30 employees, so 6,000 employees versus 30 employees, manufacturing service. And also at my law firm, Pure Service, I, I implemented the same thing. Uh, so I've done about 150 of these and I thought, you know, why not take the best practices, cut out all the stuff that doesn't need to get done and put it in the form of a model. And it's simple. Look, I'm going to get you to read the notes on how to put together a good project team. I mean, you've worked in groups before, right? A few pages of reading. Uh, how, what barriers to look at. That's an easy one. What could possibly go wrong? Any textbook talks about that. So you can read those notes in the toolkit, and I'm giving you page references. But um, next session, we're going to talk about um, justification, ROI, return on investment, because it is an investment in time, other people's energy and their motivation, and also money. So you want to provide some sense to your bosses that what we're putting in, we're going to get back. We're going to get paid more. We're going to earn more, save more. So we'll do that later. So the, the model then says, wait, wait a minute, we're justifying the system. People believe in it. We're going to get the funding to do it. Now, what is it exactly I need? So we're going to spend more time on the needs analysis section than any other section because unless you understand what you need in the system, everything from where the data comes from to where it goes and everything in between, specifically the tools, the technology, then how is it you're going to go find something? I mean, you wouldn't buy a house without knowing your needs, but I'll tell you right now, you don't know all of your needs when it comes to a house. Things like power, water, pressure, amperes, out of your electrical panel, you know, all sorts of different building code requirements. You might know a lot of the other needs. Of course, it's your house. But what we do in HRIS is to document in detail various aspects of needs, and we'll cover that in the next few sessions. And when you do that, you have a document that is going to tell you exactly what HR is, what it does, right down to the smallest component, and you become much stronger for it. You get to see the interconnections between and amongst the various functions of HR. And then, of course, we go and purchase. I'm not too interested in talking about how to buy and all that. That's something finance helps with. But then you get it, you implement it, and everything works in unison, including the people. And you've achieved a, a good HRIS. And you keep an eye on it. You evolve it as new technologies come in. So in essence, that's what the concept production model is in its simplicity. Uh, wait for the next few sessions to understand a bit more. Uh, about each element. And then, of course, let's not forget that Excel is a huge, important part of it. And a part of this week's session, we're, of course, going to get into that Excel worksheet about Centra, Inc. Okay.